Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. As our Christian friends have recently celebrated Christmas, we can't help but reflect on two coinciding events. The birth of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and the birth of Jesus, may peace be upon him. Let's sit down with Dr. Shabir Ali and reflect on these events within the context of their lives. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So in this month, there are you know, some Muslim countries that specifically mark today where they celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. We know Christians recently celebrated Christmas, celebrating the birthday of Jesus. So can you, um, I don't know, reflect a little bit on both of these uh, events? Yes, um, uh, both together, um, we can say that uh, the, 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 the point of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or uh, Jesus on whom be peace, is not so much that we should celebrate their birthdays, but mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate their lives and teachings and, and legacy uh, by living on with their teachings, by continuing their legacy. It uh, makes no sense for somebody to have a massive celebration and say, okay, I'm going to celebrate the birthday of this great Prophet. Mm -hmm. but then you don't actually follow the prophet because yeah. the, the whole uh, purpose of being of these prophets is in, in conveying the message of God to humankind and their message is here with us to stay and we need to respond to that message not just simply to celebrate the fact that they were born in the park so maybe day. let's start with since Christmas just passed we can um, start with the with the life of Jesus now what is it you know Muslims Muslims don't necessarily celebrate uh, Jesus or celebrate Christmas but what are the aspects of Jesus life that we as a I guess as Muslims should be celebrating or living on like you're talking about well, well Muslims um, have to follow all of the prophets of God but uh, we don't have uh, the information about their lives in detail mm -hmm. uh, except what is there in in the Quran and uh, by following the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him we feel that we're following all of the prophets because we have more details about the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and uh, we feel that his life is a culmination of all of the teachings of the previous prophets so so uh, what he did uh, marks not only his sunnah, but to a large extent the sunnah of the mm -hmm. previous prophets as well. Uh, so that uh, today when, when a Muslim boy is circumcised, that is in following with the sunnah, we believe, of all of the prophets, starting with Abraham. Uh, and Jesus on whom be peace as well, we know in the gospel according to Luke, was circumcised on the eighth day. So Muslims are, are committed to following the previous prophets. When we pray, Muslims are praying in, in, in a way that is reported about Jesus as well because what is known about Muslims is that in our prayers we actually fall on our faces to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 26 verse number 39 says that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane fell on his face and pray. And, and this is known to be a worldwide characteristic of Muslim to the extent that if there, is, there are television cameras uh, trying to focus on a Muslim community, mm -hmm. they will invariably show you Muslims bowed all the way down on the floor prostrating in prayer. And so uh, this, these are some of the ways in which Muslims uh, continue to follow the teachings of the great prophets and, uh, and we're encouraged to continue uh, doing so. I guess perhaps one question, question on a non-Muslim's mind might be, well, if we're saying that we value and believe in all of the prophets, why don't we revere Jesus, peace be upon him, as much as we look up to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Yeah, well, actually, in the way in which you just said this, you, you said peace be upon him uh, after mentioning both names, mm -hmm. Jesus and uh, Muhammad, uh, on whom be peace. Uh, so, uh, in a way, we revere all of the prophets, but uh, the, to, to, for us, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, holds a, a special position in that he brought the message that we're more directly following, and it is through his message that we're able to follow the others. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, uh, it may come as a surprise to many Muslims that uh, there are Christians who do not believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, they don't believe in the miracles that he performed, uh, and th they reject all of these as like fables and uh, myths and, and so on. They think that there's a natural world and these miracles are not dependable. Uh, Muslims on the other hand generally believe in the virginal conception of Jesus and generally believe that he performed many miraculous deeds because these are uh, miraculous deeds are mentioned in the Quran itself. Uh, so, so Muslims Muslims being accustomed to believing on all of these things would, would find it surprising that there are Christians who do not. Uh, but, but now if a Muslim thinks about the matter more ge generally, one would realize that had it not been for the Quran, mm -hmm. we would be in the same position as those Christians who are looking at the ancient record and thinking, well, you know, this record is not so entirely dependable and it's saying that Jesus performed these miracles like walking on water and bringing the dead back to life and so on uh, and resurrecting from the dead. Maybe that's 
not really true. So mm -hmm. uh, one would take a kind of an agnostic position at least, saying we don't know whether this is true or not. So uh, uh, how do Muslims then believe in the other prophets and believe in their miracles and believe that God communicated with them? It is through and by virtue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because had it not been for the revelation that comes specifically through him, uh, we would not be believers. We yeah. would probably be agnostics and God forbid we might even be atheists. So uh, that is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, holds a special place in Muslim thinking because the revelation that he brought is still with us and it's intact and dependable. And that uh, gives us a window into the world of the previous prophets as well. I think a good wrap up for both. Uh, so thank you very much, Dr. Shreer. You're welcome. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.